In this video, we're going to talk about the rational zeros theorem. Now, let's begin with an example. How could we find the zeros of this function? Okay, now notice this is a polynomial, and notice all of the coefficients are whole numbers, right? They're integers. How could we find the zeros? Well, one way to do it would be to factor this function, but this looks like it'd be pretty hard to factor. Okay, so do we have some other way of kind of narrowing down the possibilities for what the zeros of the function could be? And we're going to ignore some of the kind of crazy zeros, so things that involve like square roots or imaginary numbers. Uh, we're going to really look at um, rational zeros. So a rational number, remember, is a number that can be written in the form a over b, where a and b are whole numbers. So for example, 2 thirds is a rational number, and 7 is a rational number because it, it can be written as 7 over 1. Okay, what are the possibilities? possible rational zeros of this function. Uh, well, it turns out that the only possible rational zeros of this function, according to the rational zeros theorem, would be a divisor of this constant 9 divided by a divisor of the leading coefficient here, 5. Okay, so let's, let's look at what are the divisors of, divisors of 9. Well, there's three of them, right? There's 1, 3, and 9. Well, technically, we have to consider both plus and minus 1, and plus minus 3, and plus and minus 9. And what are the divisors of 5? OK, what numbers go into 5? Well, it's just 1 and 5. OK, and again, plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 5. So what numbers could be written as a divisor of 9 divided by a divisor of 5? Well, we could do 1 over 1 or 1 over 5, right? So 1 over 1 is just 1. 1 over 5 is 1 fifth. Uh, we could do 3 over 1 or 3 over 5. So 3 over 1 is just 3. 3 over 5 is 3 fifths. And then 9 over 1 or 9 over 5. So 9 over 1 is 9 and 9 fifths. And of course we have pluses and minuses and all these things. Okay, so notice how many possibilities we have here. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. These 12 numbers uh, might be zeros of this function. Now are they actually zeros of the function? Well you'd have to check them individually to check to see if they're individ uh, each of them individually are zeros. But these are the only possible rational numbers that could be zeros. So for example, uh, could f of 7, could that be zero? No, because 7 is a rational number and it's not in this list. Okay, could f of uh, negative 3 be a 0? Well, it's possible because negative 3 is one of our numbers. Uh, to actually check it, we'd have to plug it in. Okay, so any rational number that's not in this list could not be a 0. Now, could something like the square root of 2 be a 0? Yeah, it's possible because the square root of 2 is irrational. So th this is only narrowing down the possibilities of the rational zeros. And same thing, could 5 plus 3i be a 0? Well, it's possible. Okay, it doesn't get ruled out by the rational zeros theorem. Okay, because we're only looking at rational zeros. Okay, so the rational zeros theorem says this. Suppose you have a polynomial of this form. Okay, just like we had our uh, polynomial up here. Uh, has, suppose it has coefficients that are all integers. Okay, then the only possible rational uh, numbers that could be zeros of f have the form p over q, where p is a divisor of a sub 0, right, a naught, and q is a divisor of a sub n. Okay, so any rational number that's a zero of this fu uh, function would have to have the form p over q, where p is a divisor of a naught and q is a divisor of a n. So let's do an example. Use the rational zeros theorem to find all possible rational zeros of this function. Now notice we have a polynomial where we have all integer coefficients. And so what we need to look at is the constant term on the end here, negative 7, and then the leading coefficient, uh, 10. So what are the divisors, okay, divisors or factors of negative 7? Well, there's only two of them, right? It's 1 and 7. Well, we should consider plus and minus, though. So I guess technically there are four divisors of minus 7. Okay, and then what are the divisors of 10? Well, we have 1, 2, 5, and 10. Okay, and we have to do plus and minus in each of these cases. Okay, so what are the possible rational zeros of this function? Well, the only numbers that are possible would be 1 over 1, which is 1, 1 over 2, which is 1 half, 1 over 5, and 1 over 10, and then also 7 over 1, which is 7, 7 over 2, 7 over 5, and 7 over 10, and we have to put pluses and minuses on, on each of these. Okay, so there's a lot of possibilities, 
but uh, you might think, well, how does this really narrow down the possibilities very much? It would take a long time to check each of these. But it, it's still very helpful because, for example, you might wonder, is like 4 a 0 of this polynomial? If I plug in f of 4, could that be a 0? Well, you know right away it's not because 4 cannot be written as a divisor of minus 7 divided by a divisor of 10. Okay, so these are the possible rational zeros of that function.